I've been doing a lot of, you know, videos on kind of uh, debating Christians and Christian ideas and stuff like lately, and I apologize for that. I, I don't like to focus too much on one subject. I like to kind of expand and do a lot of education stuff. So, because I am forging a new path for myself, one that's different, or at least slightly different from the path that I held for the last 10 years, I've been finding kind of difficulty balancing learning myself along with, you know, teaching what I know to others about witchcraft and so forth and so on. And so this is kind of a, a video series that um, I wanted to explore and I hope people like. And it is my interpretation and my kind of um, understanding of the Greek gods. Now, before we get into this, as I've stated before, I am not a Hellenic Reconstructionist. I'm not. I uh, believe in the Greek gods and I'm a hard polytheist, but I am no way a traditionalist. Um, I believe that the gods are global. I think that we see, um, you know, reflections of the gods in many other cultures, and that, you know, I think a lot of the other gods from other cultures are simply my gods that have different names. And I, I think that makes that a, lot, a lot of sense to me. I definitely wouldn't suggest that everybody else believe the same way that I do. And I apologize if I offend those people who are Reconstructionists or believe that there is one way to worship the Greek gods. I simply don't believe that. So what I wanted to share with you is a little bit, you know, like I'm trying to do one every week, but I might do a couple this week because I'm kind of running behind on the schedule that I wanted to do. I wanted to discuss like, like a Greek god a week with you and how it is that I worship that Greek god and how I see that Greek god and how I interpret that Greek god's, you know, meaning to me. Uh, the first god that I wanted to do was Apollo. Apollo's parents are uh, Zeus and Leto. Uh, Leto is the daughter of Titans. We all know who Zeus is. Um, and then uh, basically Zeus, uh, Zeus's wife Hera, found out that Leto was pregnant, did not really like that too much, uh, tried to stop Leto from giving birth in several different ways, including imprisoning the goddess of childbirth. Um, Leto escaped to an island, was able to give birth, and gave birth to Apollo and his twin sister Artemis. Apollo has several siblings, as we know, any kids of Zeus would be um, at least half siblings of his, but he has a full sister, Artemis, as well. Um, and he also has a, a several, you know, quite a few children, um, three of which are Troilus by Hecuba, Aristeus by Serene, and Asclepius by Coronis. Several different myths that go into that. Um, if you know anything about Apollo and his lovers, there's a lot of times uh, the lovers don't fare so well after their uh, love affair with Apollo or his affections on them. For example, um, Daphne was turned into a loyal, laurel tree to try to get away from Apollo. Which, speaking of uh, love relationships, Apollo also had a relationship with Hyacinthus, um, who was um, a very good-looking young man. Um, and so Apollo uh, is a bisexual god. And this isn't all that uncommon in... Um, in the Greek pantheon, and it's one of the reasons why I think the Greeks have a, a broader understanding of sex and sexual relationships than other pantheons might. It's one of the things that I, I resonate with, being bisexual myself. Um, I think that it's great that we can have strong, powerful gods who can show a duality within them um, of being attracted to both sexes, of having both, uh, you know, being a twin and having all these other duality elements to them. I think that's a great thing, um, and it's one of the things that I enjoy about Apollo. He has several different characteristics as an Olympian. He is one of the twelve Olympians. He um, is the god of music. Um, he has an instrument, the lyre, that was made by Hermes as a gift to make up for um, Hermes stealing some of his cattle. Um, he also directs the choirs of the Muses. Um, he was also the god of prophecy and gave Cassandra the gift of prophecy, but then she rejected him, and he deemed that she would, that, you know, she'd have the gift of prophecy, but no one would ever believe her. So, kind of an ironic tale there. Also the god of the sun, god of poetry, healing, and enlightenment. But I think his chief focus for, for me would be that he's the god of the sun and the god of prophecy. And I've been working with Apollo quite a bit to try to try to hone my my own psychic abilities. Um, I found as of late that I think I'm a little bit more receptive than I once thought I was. I used to always just think of myself as a projective person, able to project my feelings and emotions on other people. 
And I still believe that I have that ability, but I also um, have been focusing more on my receptive qualities as well. And that's one of the great things that Apollo has been able to help me with. Now, there are several holy days for Apollo on the old Greek calendars and stuff like that. But I, I don't really go by those so much, and there's several reasons why. Number one, most Greek cities have their own calendars and holidays. I don't live in a Greek city. I live in North Carolina. You know, um... I'm I'm a modernist, and I believe that just because one person celebrated, um, or or you know one group of people celebrated him on a, on a specific day, doesn't mean that I have to honor him in that specific day. I should find days that have my own significance, and that's exactly what we've done: is we've made our own significant day. Now, of course, Sunday is the day of the sun, and we give significance to that day to Apollo, um, and give thanks, do prayers for him, and things like that. Also, the solstices. Um, Winter solstice being um, kind of like a rebirth. And I understand that there's no real myth that ties Apollo to that. But once again, I don't believe that the myths all have to be 100% true to believe that the gods are true. You know, I'm not a fundamentalist by any means, you know, for that. Not saying that anybody who believes that the myths are 100% true is wrong. Um, it's just not my take on things. I also, you know, we celebrate the summer solstice for him too as his pinnacle time where he's the strongest and then starts to rest for the rest of the year. And there's several ways that we honor Apollo. Uh, there's different sacrifices we do, like libations, or we'll do deeds in his honor, um, like do throw readings for other people for free, um, and uh, use our, our gifts you know, that Apollo gives us for free. Um, and also, um, you know, doing things like writing poetry for Apollo, doing prayers for him, and things like that. So there's several things that we can do. Um, we even do dancing uh, for Apollo and stuff like that, because he's the god of music, um, that you can do in honor of your gods that don't have to be exactly the way maybe think people think, did things in the old days, but there are things that we sing honor Apollo um, and everything like that. And we've never had any kind of um, inclination that we're doing things wrong. If you have any, you know, ways that you honor Apollo, I'd love to hear them. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Apollo. Um, by all means, I don't think I know everything about him, but I have had some experiences, and he has helped me quite a bit and protected us. Um, Apollo's name means to drive away, and uh, I personally believe that invoking him and his name will help you clear your house of spirits or, or negative energies that you don't want. He's helped us with that in the past as well. So anyway, uh, that's my video. Please share your thoughts and blessed be.